Welcome to the third part of the Cori chapter. In the last class, we have learned the fixed point representation. A fixed point number is composed of three components, sine bit, integer part, and the fractional parts. The length of the integer part is called IWL, and the length of the fractional part is called FWL. And the uh, word length is the uh, combined length of all these components. So today, uh, we'll learn how to perform a simulation-based fixed point optimization for Cori. Before we begin, uh, let's summarize the baseline Cori implementation we made in the last class. Uh, we performed five Cori iterations, and the type of variables uh, was set to single precision floating point. And as the input data, 10,000 values were provided in the range of minus pi over 2 to plus pi over 2. The expected output data is the cosine and the sine values of the input data. And the output RMC was a 0 0.0245, and the output maximum error was a 0 0.0627. And the resource consumption uh, was 10 DSPs, uh, 1425 flip flops, and 975 lookup tables. Okay, so uh, we're going to compare uh, these numbers uh, with the fixed point optimized version. Our optimization goal is um, given a target error threshold, minimize the resource consumption of the Cori implementation. For the uh, error threshold, uh, it'll be given to you in some form of a specification. Uh, for example, uh, it could be something like a SQNR of uh, 30 decibels or more. And for the resource consumption, uh, it could be one of these uh, APJ uh, resources, or um, if you're going with ASIC, uh, it could be area in square millimeter. And uh, what you want to do is uh, minimize as much as possible uh, without uh, uh, going over the target threshold. Now, uh, let's go over the fixed point optimization steps uh, one by one. The first step uh, would be to measure the dynamic range. Uh, to be more specific, uh, build a reference implementation uh, in floating point representation, uh, preferably in the double precision. Uh, next, insert a piece of code that measures the mi minimum and the maximum value of uh, each variable. Uh, for example, uh, if you have this code that updates data uh, you want to insert a code that measures the maximum value of data and the minimum value of data. This max and mean functions uh, can be defined as a C macro. Uh, then you can run C simulation and obtain minimum and maximum value of each variable. You can simply uh, print out the values of uh, data max and the data min at the end of C simulation. Okay. Now, there is one shortcut. Um, if you have a full knowledge of the application, uh, you may choose to skip step one. For example, uh, we know that the value of data is going to be somewhere between pi over two and negative pi over two, right? and the value of cosine and sine is going to be somewhere between 1.0 and negative 1.0. So um, if you have such knowledge, go ahead and use it. Uh, but if you're not sure what you're dealing with, uh, you probably want to follow these steps and measure the dynamic range. The next step is to set initial IWL and FWL. Uh, first, set sine and IWL uh, to the value measured in step one. Uh, so what I mean is that uh, if the variable uh, stays in the positive region, uh, you don't need to assign the sine bit. 
uh, but if the variable uh, goes from a positive to a negative value, um, you need to assign, assign it. Uh, for the IWL, uh, take a look at the absolute maximum number and set accordingly. Next, uh, set the initial word length to about 16 bits to 32 bits. Uh, the length uh, actually depends on the error rate you're aiming for. Uh, the the uh, rule of thumb is that uh, one bit leads to about six decibels of SQNR. Uh, but keep in mind that uh, having 16 bits doesn't necessarily mean that you can achieve 96 decibels. Uh, the actual number can be a lot less uh, if a fixed point optimization is not done carefully. Next, uh, set the fractional word length to word length uh, subtracted by integer word length. Okay. Now, uh, let's see some examples. Suppose that a variable has a dynamic range from uh, 4.2 to uh, 1.6, and uh, you have decided to set the word length to uh, 16 bits. Uh, this variable uh, always stays positive, uh, so you don't need a sign bit, and uh, this variable has a maximum value of 4.2, so you need 3 bits of IWL. You know, um, if you have 1 bit, uh, you can express up to 1, 2 bits up to 3, and uh, 3 bits up to 7, right? Uh, finally, uh, since we have set the word length to uh, 16, uh, the fractional length is going to be 16 minus 3, so uh, 13 bits. Next example, um, suppose a variable has uh, this amount of dynamic range. Um, in this case, uh, the, the variable can be a uh, positive or negative, so uh, you need the sign bit. Um, also, it can go up to minus 7, uh, so the IWL is uh, 3 bits. Um, it's not 2 bits, uh, just from looking at the positive uh, maximum value of 3, uh, it should be set to the absolute uh, maximum value. Right? Uh, and uh, finally, uh, the F FWL uh, is going to be uh, 16 minus 3 minus 1, so uh, 12 bits. All right, so um, please pause, pause for a second uh, if you need some time to go over this again. Um, if not, uh, please go to the next slide. After assigning the initial IWL and FWL, you need to shift and sign extend for all operations. Um, I'll explain the addition first. Uh, suppose that you're adding variables A and B and assigning to variable C. Variable A has one sign bit, IWL three bits, FWL four bits, and the variable B has one sign bit, IWL five bits, and FWL two bits. Uh, from step one, let's assume that uh, you already know C needs a sign bit and the IWL of five bits. What you need to do now is align the fractional part and sign extend. Variable A has uh, four uh, fractional bits and the variable B has two fractional bits. So for addition, uh, you need to add two bits of zeros uh, for variable B and align the binary point. Next, uh, variable A has three IWL and the variable B has five IWL. So you need to uh, sign extend for uh, variable A. Okay, uh, be careful not to add zeros here. Uh, you should sign extend to make the addition correct. Uh, then you can do the addition. All right. Um, now, uh, let's make it into a C code. For aligning the fractional bits in variable B, uh, you can left shift by two bits. 
and for assign extension in variable a, uh, you can do a type casting into a larger integer. You can see that variable c has one sign bit, iwl five bit, and fwl four bit. Uh, so that's why we're type casting to ap int ten, and uh, you should do it for variables uh, a and variable b. Now, uh, some of you might be bothered that uh, we're adding two zeros to B because it means that the information uh, here was lost. And uh, whatever uh, we have for the last two bits of variable A uh, may not be necessary in some cases. So if it is okay to lose the information for the last two bits of variable A, uh, you might want to do some rounding. Uh, let's suppose that we are rounding down. Uh, then we can truncate the last two bits of A uh, by right shifting and add to B. Uh, in this case, uh, C is going to be 8 bits long. So we use the type APINT8. Now, uh, one thing you should be careful about uh, in C, the shift operator has lower precedence than the addition operator. So you should always put parentheses, this one, uh, around the bitwise shift. Okay. Now let's look at multiplication. Suppose that we are multiplying a variable uh, with no sign bit, IWL 3 bit, fwf 4 bit uh, times a variable uh, with the no sign bit, iwf 5 bit, and fwl 2 bit. Uh, we assume that uh, from step 1, uh, we already know C is iwl and that it has no sign bit. Since this is a multiplication, uh, we can calculate C's fwl by combining the fwl of A and B, so 4 bits and 2 bits, so uh, C's FWL is 6 bits. Uh, next, we can calculate C's word length by adding up the FWL and the IWL. So uh, we just computed uh, it C's FWL to be 6 bits and the IWL is known to be 7 bits. So the word length of C is going to be 7 plus 6, so 13 bits. Okay? Uh, then we write down the C code uh, after sign extension. Uh, variable C has no sign bit, so the type we're going to use is APUINT13. And we typecast variable A and B uh, to APUINT13. Uh, finally, uh, you may choose to do the rounding. Let's solve another question on multiplication. What should be the word length of variable C uh, when C equals A times B and the A has one sign bit, IWL three bits, FWL four bits, and B has one sign bit, IWL two bits, and FWL five bits. Um, let's assume that the C uh, so IWL is known to be four bits after simulation and that we're not doing any rounding. At first sight, uh, you may think that uh, since variables uh, A and B has eight bits, the word length of the result is going to be 16 bits. Um, that is, um, since we're multiplying these two numbers, um, uh, result C would have two sign bits and five bits of IWL and 9 bits of FWL. However, um, we don't need two sign bits. Uh, we only need one, right? And uh, by simulation, uh, we know IWL only goes up to four bits. So uh, the answer is going to be uh, 14 bits, one sign bit, IWL four bits, and FWL 9 bits. 
So unlike the initial guess of 16 bits, uh, it turns out we can optimize it down to 14 bits. Okay. Also, um, if you want to do some rounding, uh, make sure you lose uh, last few bits of the fractional part by shifting right, right? Uh, you know, not lose the sign bit or the integer part. All right. So um, let's solve an exercise on uh, what we just did. Uh, suppose that we are adding two variables and the uh, variable A has one sign bit, IW of five bits, and FW of eight bits, and the variable B has no sign bit, IW of seven bits, FW of one bit, and the C has one sign bit, IW of seven bits, and FW of eight bits. Uh, please shift and sign extend uh, this computation and uh, write down the HLS C code. Uh, please pause now. And uh, when you wrote down your answer, please go to the next slide. Okay, the solution. Uh, variable A has eight fractional bits and the variable B has one fractional bit. Uh, so you need to add seven bits of zeros to B by uh, left shifting by seven bits. Uh, next, variable A has uh, five bits of IWL and uh, one sign bit, and the variable B has uh, seven bits of IWL but no sign bit. So variable A uh, needs uh, the sign extension, and the variable B uh, needs to add a sign bit. And uh, both can be done uh, with the typecasting to the type of the variable C, uh, which is uh, AP int 16. So the solution is going to be uh, uh, A typecasted to AP int 16, and the variable B also typecasted to AP int 16, and the left shifted by seven bits. Make sense? Okay. All right. So um, let's uh, now uh, proceed to the fourth step. We have set the IWL and FWL of all variables and the main shifts and sign extension for all operations. So your code is now in the fixed point representation, which is different from your reference implementation. So um, let's try to get a sense of how good uh, your implementation is by measuring the uh, output error. Uh, first, uh, run C simulation of your fixed point implementation, uh, and then uh, compute the output error against the reference implementation. Uh, you can use a metric that fits your specification. Um, next, check if the uh, output error uh, exceeds the uh, error threshold. Um, if the threshold has been exceeded, uh, uh, you can stop the fixed point optimization process. But if not, uh, it means that uh, you can continue reducing the bit width and obtain better implementation. So uh, let's ha see how to do this in the next slide. So if you haven't reached your error threshold, uh, you can further reduce the word length and bring down the hardware cost. Uh, just make sure that you reduce the fractional word length, uh, not the sign bit or the integer word length, uh, because you always want to avoid overflow. Now, the tricky part in this step is choosing the variable to reduce the FWL. Uh, you may choose randomly or a better choice would be to choose a variable that gives the most resource reduction uh, with the least error increase. Uh, so this is a greedy choice. Um, and just, just keep in mind that uh, you may fall into local optimum. Uh, if you have many variables in your code, uh, doing a search of this kind uh, may take too much time. Uh, one way to reduce the search space uh, is to group variables with a similar FWL. 
Uh, for example, uh, if you have a C equals A plus B, E equals C plus D, uh, you can probably do a shifting and rounding so that all these variables have the same FWL. Then uh, you can group them together and uh, change the FWL for the whole group. And uh, this will help you reduce the uh, search space. Uh, for our coding implementation, uh, we are adding the variables uh, current sign, uh, current cosine, uh, cosine shift, and uh, sine shift. So uh, you can probably make those variables into a group and assign the same FWL uh, without much loss in accuracy. Okay, uh, but that we probably can say the same thing for the data and uh, we'll have to do the search separately. The next step is to reduce the FWL of the chosen variable by one. Um, if you have chosen a variable group, uh, you can reduce the FWL of all the variables in that group by one. So uh, this will reduce the uh, hardware cost. Uh, finally, uh, go back to step four and measure the output error. Um, you can keep repeating this process until the target error threshold has been reached. You now have learned the basics of the simulation-based optimization process. Uh, so please go back to the query code we made in the last class and optimize it on your own. I won't show you my code, but uh, just share the result. Uh, keep in mind that uh, this is just one implementation and I'm pretty sure that uh, you can find a better design point on your own. Okay. So uh, this is the synthesis result. Uh, this one is for the baseline implementation in float. And uh, this is my uh, optimized implementation. You can see that the DSP um, flip-flop and the LUT consumption is much lower than the baseline. Uh, then the, let's check how much the error has increased. The baseline implementation has RMSE of uh, 0.0245 and the max error of uh, 0.0627. Uh, but the optimized uh, implementation has RMSE of 0.0256 and the max error of 0.0781. So um, you can see that the error has uh, certainly increased. But I think uh, most people would agree that uh, this trade-off uh, between the resource reduction and the error increase uh, is not a bad one. Mm. Uh, really, the, whether this trade-off uh, makes sense or not uh, depends on your implementation needs, right? Okay. The optimization steps uh, we saw until now is for the simulation-based fixed point optimization. Uh, let's take a step back and evaluate the process. Uh, the advantage of the simulation-based optimization is that we can perform aggressive uh, bit width optimization. But the disadvantage is that we have to run the simulation over and over again and check the error every time we change the length of the fractional bit. So the whole process is very, very time consuming. Uh, another disadvantage is that it is not very robust against overflow. Uh, the dynamic range of each variables uh, may change depending on the data set. And if it exceeds the IWL you have set for another data set, the output is going to overflow. And that this may lead to very high error rate. Right? Um, another approach you can take uh, is the analytical fixed point optimization. Uh, I won't go into details, but uh, this approach uh, analyzes the quantization noise with the statistical analysis of the code. So it's much faster and the data set independent, but uh, tends to provide the result with longer variable bit width compared to the simulation based approach. 
There are many studies uh, on this subject and the optimization process will vary from a paper to paper. Uh, let me just refer you to two classic papers. Uh, one based on the simulation based method and the other one based on the analytical method. Uh, you also find many recent papers on this subject in the context of the machine learning training and the inference optimization. Um, you're welcome to read uh, any of those papers as well. Here's the summary of today's lecture. Uh, we have learned the simulation-based fixed-point optimization steps, uh, which is composed of uh, measuring the dynamic range, setting the initial IWL and FWL, shift and sign extension for operations, then the measuring the output error, and the reducing the FWL. And uh, you can iterate uh, the step four and step five until you meet the error threshold. Okay, so um, uh, we'll wrap up here for the quarter chapter and uh, we'll continue uh, with the new content in the next lecture. Uh, see you then.